Welcome to Force.comcast episode 13, nested URLs and public APIs. In this episode, we're going to extend our language service from the previous episode by adding some nested resources. You'll recall that in the last episode, we went through the language service class that we have here, where we mapped to the URL slash languages. And we were putting on the language ID at the end here to be able to do things such as posting, getting, putting, and deleting a language with a particular ID. Here I've written another RESTful uh, Apex class, which is called the Language Framework Service. And what we've done is we've gone in and we've added a new custom object called Framework, which is um, in a master detail relationship with our language. So a language such as Ruby can have many frameworks, such as Rails, Sinatra, and Padrino. Um, and similarly for something like Python, it can have Django, um, and so on and so forth. So what we've got here is we've got our nested URL, where it's slash languages, which has a particular language. Uh, star where we have the language ID and then frameworks and then we can either have framework ID or not so we can go in and let's just see this working so we've got our original slash languages here and if we go back into our rest explorer we can run that and it still returns Ruby as before this is the ID for the Ruby language if we now add on to that slash frameworks and execute you can now see it returns us a list of three frameworks. So let's just select one of those. Let's choose Rails. And if we append this onto the end, we can now retrieve just the Rails framework. Okay? And this is the standard way in which you'll see most nested resources working uh, with REST APIs. So you have a series of resources where you have um, what would be a master detail or parent child relationship for us. Um, and you can navigate through them by just narrowing them down, so getting all the frameworks for a particular language like we have in this instance. Now, I've only done the get method here. Um, you can go away and the same theory works for all the put, the post, the delete, and the patch methods. Um, but the way in which we have to do this requires us to use some regular expressions to do some of our own matching. So you see we've got our URL mapping here of slash languages star slash framework star. And what we've done is in this get method, we've put together a pattern which mirrors this except that we had some groupings for the regular expressions. So let's just go through and see what this means. So the pattern class here takes in a, a regular expression into the compile method, and this is a standard system class provided by Salesforce. And what we've got here is slash languages, slash, which matches the URL here. This area here, this uh, small uh, regular expression here means um, a series of strings. So it means one or more characters uh, put together in a string before the next uh, definitive character, which in this case is a forward slash. So this is saying that we expect one or more characters in between two forward slashes, uh, which would be our ID that we're expecting. We've then got frameworks, which again matches up here. And then we've got another group here, uh, where instead of using the plus symbol, we've used the star symbol, and that says zero or more. So that means that we could or we could not have a framework ID. We just need to figure out if we do. So we then compile that pattern, and then we match that against our request URI in the same way that we retrieved a request URI before and retrieved the ID. We now just match it against this regular expression. And the way in which regular expressions and groups work is that it will take these and record them as a group for us to access really quickly and easily. So we just instantiate a framework list here, which is what we're going to return. If our matcher finds a pattern match, so if it matches, um, and then first of all, if the length of group number two, so this is group number one, this would be group number two, and group number zero is the entire pattern, and that's not uh, that's useful sometimes, but not in this case. So if group number two, i.e. the part after this second forward slash, is uh, has length zero, then we know that we haven't got a framework ID, so we're just looking for all of the frameworks for a particular language. So what we do is we set the frameworks list to be the list from this SQL, uh, SQL expression here, sorry. And then if we do have um, an ID here, then we know that it's going to be from this expression. So all we're doing is we're just doing some different filtering to retrieve one or many um, different uh, frameworks. And then we just return that list. So it's a really, really simple uh, way of putting things together. And if you're doing multiple methods, you can uh, extract and abstract, uh, abstract some of this out so that it, uh, it's a bit... Uh, more dry for reuse, but it's a great way of you doing proper nested resources on Salesforce uh, when you're doing your own public APIs and extending it in a way that 
really kind of fits together nicely so that it matches things such as Rails or any of the common uh, APIs that you might use on something like Twitter or Facebook or anything like that you're integrating with. And as we've seen, it works quite nicely and provides us with a very simple way of doing this. Um, this is also uh, something I've recently put up on Stack Exchange as an answer to a question. Um, so if I'll put up this link, uh, the link to this video on there so that if anyone ever comes back to that question, they can see um, a slightly more fully-fledged example here. So that's how you do nested resources. So obviously you can see that both of them work in line together as we've shown. We've, we've done just languages without frameworks and languages with frameworks. And it's a very uh, nice way of us working. So the next thing I wanted to show you is how we can make this a public uh, API. So at the moment we're using REST Explorer because uh, this is dealt with OAuth for us. However, we won't always want to use OAuth um, to authenticate people within the system. We might be wanting to provide a public API to our application. So how do we do this? So if we go back into the site that we created previously, um, for one of the earlier videos and we remove the URL rewriter class um, and I've just changed the home page to uh, in maintenance um, just to make it easier what we can do is we can click on this public access settings button here and this will load up the profile for the particular uh, guest account on the force.com site and what we need to do is we need to add our service classes into the enabled Apex class access. So that's language framework service and language service, both added in. And then you can see here I've also made read and view all permissions on both the language and the framework objects so that they can be used. And then all we need to do is if we go back to our site real quick, we can take the site URL and we can append our URL here onto it and it will work for us. So. I've already got a bash prompt open. Uh, so if I put in here the URL, which has to be HTTPS, um, and then I've got here slash services, Apex REST languages, and we'll just go through it stage by stage. So just the languages one to start off with. And you can see here it returns some JSON for me, the language type, its URL, um, its name, and so on and so forth. And then if we go up here and we copy in slash frameworks, you can see I get a list of frameworks back. And then I'm just going to go in here and copy the Rails ID again. So we can append that on. And again, I get the Rails framework back. So it's really, really simple and easy for you to create a public API. Um, some people don't seem to know about this. It uh, can be quite well hidden piece of information. Um, but there you go. That's how you do it. It's really quick and easy. In next week's video, we're going to discuss how you can uh, test these APIs. Um, it's kind of one of the final stages of working with APIs before we then uh, move on from there. Hope you enjoyed it. And please remember to follow us um, at force.comcast on Twitter. That's at force.comcast. And that's where you'll find the latest information around any new released videos. Um, and you can go and find a full list of all the videos uh, that have been previously released.